from the southernmost point in the United States of America. I'm James Bates. I guess that makes me your southernmost host, right? This is Portraits, and we're in Key West, Florida, and we're going to have some fun today. Come on. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. All right, you hydrated, stretched? All right, I don't want you cramping, because we've got a good one today on Portraits. We're in one of the world's most colorful places to talk about one of college football's most colorful dudes. Offensive mastermind, two-time national coach of the year, Mike Leach. Only studs in here. We'll hang out with Coach as he spends some time in one of his favorite spots, the Florida Keys. Hang out at the legendary Captain Tony's Saloon, visit some great landmarks. We'll look for pirate treasures. You never know what we'll find. <laughs> Hail State. Hail State. All right, so here's the plan. We're going to tour this magnificent island, and we're going to paint the portrait of one of college football's most unique characters. On two, on two. Set, hut. You're offside. Hut. Here we go. Come on. James Bates open, take 44. Hey, I'm the one they call James Bates, but my real name is Bates. I was a co-captain and all-SEC linebacker on the Florida Gator National Championship football team. Number 44, James Bates. These days, I'm a family guy, a broadcaster. With James Bates. And an artist, you know, like portraits and stuff. Kind of like the title of this show, Portraits, where we feature some of the more colorful characters in all the world of sports. Enjoy. Where do you think you'll find such a unique personality as Mike Leach? Well, at one of the oldest and most legendary places in all of Key West. Originally constructed in 1851, this place was an ice house. It was a morgue. It's the oldest bar in Florida. Captain Tony's Saloon. It's a landmark. So come for the history and the beer, but stay for the stools. A lot of people love to sit on stools with some of their favorite stars. Wade Boggs, Dale Jr., they say he comes in here all the time. Clint Eastwood. Oh, Muhammad Ali used to come down and fish with Captain Tony every year. The greatest of all time. You don't have to call me darling, darling. And you know Mike Leach has a stool, right? He's a regular. <laughs> Mike Leach, come on, coach. Got your stool ready for you. All right. You. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Looks good. How, how does one get their own stool at Captain Tony's Saloon? In my case, uh, I had a book, Swing Your Sword, that made it on the National New York Times bestseller list. So it's because of the writer in you. You know, the Hemingway wrote novels at this bar right here. And, and so it's, it's not just the football coaching. It's not just the air raid. Well, maybe, I don't know, but that certainly, I think, helped, you know. Another thing about Key West, if you're here long enough and become an honorary conk, is the Key West dog tag. It's just fascinating. The, uh, the Atocha coin that you wear around your neck, do you have it on right now? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Wow, can you explain to everybody what that is? Uh, the Atocha, uh, there's a fella, Mel Fisher, uh, who was down here in Key West, and I watched his shows in the 70s. Basically, it's about him uh, for nine or 10 years uh, searching the ocean for the Atocha wreck. The Atocha had left uh, the New World to Havana, and they were gonna take all their treasure uh, to Spain, and then when they got in the Florida Straits, they got in a, in a hurricane, a massive hurricane, and he searched for years and years and years. After 10 years, he found, well, he found a big chunk of it. That it's, it's still down there, and they still search, and they still find things. Uh, but among the things they found is, uh, you know, pieces of eight, and, uh, emeralds, and gold. And, and he used to run around this town with a, a gold money chain. It's kind of a big uh, Key West legend thing. So here you are, a kid growing up in Cody, Wyoming. What drew you here? Well, I always wanted to see it. You start in fourth grade and start coloring the US map when you're memorizing the capitals and things. And uh, then, you know, dangling down here at the bottom are these islands, you know. And so you're a fourth grader or whatever, and you say, you know, what's this? When it's the, the end of the continental U.S., and you say, well, I have to get here. 
It's open all night. It, you know, it's, it's almost like Vegas in that sense. Are you nocturnal? You really seem to, to be at your best when the sun is down. Uh, yeah, I am a night person. I, and some of that, well, part of it is uh, from a football standpoint. And this needs to be fast. Sure. Make sure we're fast, everything we do. You know, we practice in the afternoon kind of traditional way, so you start meeting, you practice. From here to the end of this practice, it's football time. You lock it in. But then also, uh, recruiting-wise, uh, the best time to call recruits is between 7 and 10 at night. Right there, that puts it a little later, you know? So it's more of a swing shift, not a night shift, more of a swing shift. Well, Coach, just as you're drawn to Key West, you know, walking around Duval Street with you here in town, people are drawn to you. And, and people are drawn to you not just to take pictures. They like hearing your take on things. They like hearing your advice. And it sure seems like you like to give it. You like people, and, and you like to say it like it is, it seems. Uh, if they ask a question, I try to answer it, you know. One of the most screwed up things about this country is the fact that in order to do anything, in order to cross the street, we always have to have a committee. So I figure, well, screw the committee. We really only need one guy. And now he's got to be smart enough to call either heads or tails. That's it. Well, first of all, there should be more sharks if you're by an ocean. That tiger at LSU that's a live, real tiger sitting in there in some metal structure, which clearly he could rip his way out of if he wanted to, even half wanted to, that's an awesome one. Uh, the buffalo of Colorado, that's an awesome one. So the Pitt State Gorillas, when it came time for the opponent to come out, they played Welcome to the Jungle, just blaring, just blaring Welcome to the Jungle. Then the visiting team would come through the tunnel, and they'd all be hurling bananas at the visiting team. You'd see bananas everywhere, bananas bouncing off helmets, bananas just flying through the air. Uh, and that was Welcome to Pitt State, because you're about to play the Gorillas. How about that? And that's how the world has gotten to know Mike Leach, from press conferences, giving advice. The dude loves to speak his mind. I'd do a pretty good job expressing opinions, whether they're smart or dumb. Gotta have that British gecko guy have a bowl, you know? The, 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 and I'll tell you, I'll be honest with that. That, that commercial is compelling enough, I can't even tell you what they're selling. <laughs> now, some of y'all might know Mike Leach as a football coach. Maybe you even know him as a pirate. But a wedding counselor? Uh, when it comes to marriages, uh, the women lose their mind. Your fiance's gonna lose her mind. Several of your sisters and uh, female relatives are gonna lose their mind. When we return, we'll continue painting a portrait of Mike Leach and listen to his advice on everyday life issues. I hate candy corn. That's the Halloween version of fruitcake. I mean, uh, there's a reason they only have them once a year. And later in the show, we'll cruise around town. All kinds of history. Hey, Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville. And look for treasure, just like a pirate. More portraits with Coach Mike Leach. Coming at you next. Arr! I came down a couple of years ago, and, and we sat here with you in, in Captain Tony's saloon, and, and I, I grabbed Joey, the owner, and I said, why is this such a good fit for Coach Leach? And he said something that, that's always stuck with me, and it is, we're not all there, so we're all here. That's right. And I couldn't get out of my head, and I did a big painting of, we're not all there, so we're all here. The painting sold, Coach, but I had shirts made for you, so I wanted you to have one of these and wear it back up in Mississippi. Yeah, no, that'll be good. That's outstanding. 
How about that? Batesy on the back, see? That's like Banksy, except it's Batesy, there you, you go. see? Yeah, how about that, huh? Got the thumbs up from the big man, Coach Mike Leach. But Coach Leach wasn't always the big man. It took him a while to work his way up. At one point, he was the man sitting next to the man sitting next to the man. But everybody had a feeling that one day, the college football world would have to deal with one different dude. On a shuttle pass. Okay, now the trouble is, is it's gotta be your offhand. And it's gonna be like, you know, this weird basketball pass. You know, to the point where you can't go like this and then motion to the defensive end. Is this what you want? Yeah. You know, get it in the circle. You know, you know, it was both entertaining and disgusting to see on film. You know, one of the most important things that uh, our country has offered over the years is, uh, is free, unfiltered communication. Now, uh, you know, there, there are those that are trying to outlaw it, but, um, you know, and it would certainly be a shame if we allowed that to happen. <laughs> Unfiltered communication. But you know, Coach Leach doesn't limit his opinions to just football. Oh no, he tackles all of life's issues, like weddings. My wisdom would be, uh, you, you have to stay out of the way. Now, and I wish you a very happy marriage, and I'm sure you'll have one, but uh, I'm just telling you, uh, when it comes to marriages, uh, the women lose their mind. Your fiance's gonna lose her mind. Several of your sisters and uh, female relatives are gonna lose their mind. They're gonna barrage you with constant questions. What should we wear? I don't care. We seat this this way or th that that way, I don't care. But see, I don't care is not satisfactory at all and you're gonna get caught in a catch-22, and I'm certain that you already have, and that catch-22 is, well, I want you to be a part of this too. Uh, so what color invitations? All right, the blue ones. I kinda like the tan ones. Okay, the tan ones then. Oh, you're just saying that because uh, 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 you want this over with. You're not even thinking about it, which is of course true. And it's just gonna go back and forth, and they're gonna play keep away from you until uh, after you're married. But uh, take comfort in knowing that uh, once the ceremony's over, you know, life will get progressively better from there, even though there's some adjustment. Bob Dylan's got a stool in here somewhere too. I'm not exactly Bob Dylan, but they, they'll ask me a question or something and I'll try to answer it, you know. Uh, I, I do a pretty good job expressing opinions, whether they're smart or dumb. We're the only ones, we're, I mean, really, why? Have you been to the other planets? Have you checked out the other planets? I mean, to me, it makes it makes more sense that if it happened here, it happened somewhere else than it does that it only happened here. I, I don't have an explanation for it. How about a rapid fire on a few things? Uh, we all need your take and, and some advice. Bigfoot. You know, I, I hope there's Bigfoot. I don't think there is. If Bigfoot had a kid, would you recruit him? Would you think he'd be a pretty good football player? Uh, yes, I'd recruit him. He'd either be uh, an O-lineman or he might be a D-lineman, depending how he ran. Cats or dogs? Uh, I would say dogs, but you got to be able to keep an eye on them. Dogs more your buddy. A cat, you can walk past and do your thing, and I think the cat prefers it that way. Is your cat a Hemingway cat? No, I've always wanted one. Their paws, of course, they have six toes and it looks like a catcher's mitt. You know, you can live with me or you can live at the Hemingway house. What would you want to do, you know? <laughs> I don't know, that's a tough one. How about cryptocurrency? Is that a good investment? I don't know enough about it. I think it ranges between pyramid scheme and uh, a great innovation. Something that's also kind of new that uh, that you seem to know enough about to have uh, have your fun with it is social media. Well, yeah, no kidding. That's what everybody's doing. Yeah, that's right. Virtually everyone. Well, where do you want to go? Well, what difference does it make? Because all we're going to be doing is looking in this machine anyway. You know, you have to have social media because everybody else does. If nobody else had it, you wouldn't need it. You know, and I guess that's what I'd prefer is to not need it. I'm kind of happier without it. You know, the, the stretches without it, I think, are, are kind of more pleasant. You know, you're, you're less distracted. The nighttime is the right time for Halloween, and you like the holiday, but you don't like candy corn. 
I hate candy corn. That's the Halloween version of fruit cake. I mean, uh, there's a reason they only have them once a year. <laughs> I like conch shells. I don't like candy corn. Oh, weirdo doesn't like candy corn. That's anti-Halloween. It's un-American, really, is what it is. But that's what you gotta like about Leach. He never sugarcoats it, and he's definitely not afraid of the camera, is he? When we return to Portraits Inside the Playbook with Coach Mike Leach. You want to learn about the Air Raid offense? One of college football's offensive entrepreneurs. Yeah! Yeah! Now here's what I want to see, a guy that can really focus on his job and do his job. Let's go, Woody. Only studs in here. Next on Portraits. Yeah, a little bit of everything for you down here in Key West. You wanna go fishing? You can go fishing. Wanna go snorkeling? Go snorkeling. Hey, Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville. All kinds of history. Ernest Hemingway's house. You guys saw it at Captain Tony's. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Rooster. You look nice. Oh, yeah. Sweet. It's the Key West Lighthouse. Come on, let's go up there. Wow, high atop Key West, Florida. You can see for miles. A lot of military bases here in the Florida Keys, U.S. Naval Station Key West. A lot of the Navy's top guns will come here to train because of the ideal weather conditions. And come to think of it, maybe that's why Mike Leach, a pioneer of the air raid offense, feels right at home in the Florida Keys. Military tactics have, have always fascinated you, and the air raid, uh, from what I hear, Coach Spurrier had his air ball at Duke, and you took that a step further and, and kind of intertwined it with, with your, your like of, of the military, and, and you called it the air raid. And it really hasn't changed that much at all, it, it doesn't seem, watching TV anyway. Uh, it's, I think it's changed a little as different people, and that's interesting, like all the people that, you know, that I've coached or that uh, coached with and uh, that type of thing, to see what they've done with it. And then, of course, now uh, the NFL's predominantly air raid. The, at least the last 10 Super Bowls been played by, you know, two air raid teams or have some form of air raid concepts, you know. All the way to the Super Bowl, the Air Raid roster is a who's who of some of football's greatest. Leach coached the Air Raid with Hal Mummy at Kentucky before making head coaching stops at Texas Tech, Washington State, and then he became the big dog at Mississippi State in the mighty SEC. But the Air Raid began way back in 1989 in Mount Pleasant, Iowa. Population, oh, about 9,000 at Iowa Wesleyan. That's where he and Mummy created the blueprint for an offense that would revolutionize football from the Pee Wees to the pros forever. Question, where did the name Air Raid come from? It's a good one, wasn't it? The media kept asking us over and over and over, well, what's your offense called? What's your offense called? Well, it's called offense, you know? We want, we want the offensive guys out there, we say offense, you know? There was a guy named Bob Lamb who came in one day and somehow at a swap meet or in the back of somebody's barn or something, he found this air raid siren. He turns that sucker on. I mean, and it just, you know, it was extremely loud. And it was a genuine air raid siren. And they did play it every time we scored after that. As a matter of fact, sometimes just to bug the opponent, they play it anyway to the point where uh, the rest would make him stop because Iowa Wesley in that crowded of a play, so he'd be in the end zone occasionally get thrown out of games. He goes, here's what you call your offense. Somebody's going to say it, and I was the first to say air raid. Just pass, boy, what a marvelous pass. Caught by East. Touchdown, Kentucky. Kentucky.
Kentucky. Uh, Tim Couch helped to put it on the map. CM Newton brought in Coach Mummy and Mike Leach. Walked into his office, introduced myself to him, and the first thing he said to me was two things. You're the starter, and we're going to throw it 50 times a game. Couch picks it up. It's got his man. The biggest problem hasn't been having enough plays, it's been having too many, not making up your mind on um, what you were going to do and, and um, you know, what was what you were going to hang your hat on offensively. We were really the only team that said, you know what, we're not running it at all. We're, we're going to throw it 50, 60 times. It was an exciting brand of football to watch. So that's credit to Coach Mummy and Coach Leach. They were innovators as far as, you know, college football and spread offenses and, you know, what people are, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, adapting to now. Texas Tech, we, if, if we hadn't heard about it at that point, uh, we certainly did by the time you made your way to Lubbock, Texas. Second down now. Deep strike. Got the big man. Country pulls free. And touchdown. Red Raiders with a second to go. We've had some great ones over the years. I just got the chills. What is it? It takes a, a quarterback to be the, the Gardner Men Minshew, the, the uh, Tim Couch. What, what makes a perfect fit for a quarterback in the air raid offense? You know, physically, see, I've always thought quarterbacks are coached positions. There's so many positions in football. They say, well, you, you know, th this guy's either got it or he doesn't. Uh, quarterbacks kind of run the gamut. I mean, because, you know, if you're accurate, you make good decisions within uh, the other moving parts of the offense, you can develop your skills. The most important thing and the hardest to measure is the guy that can elevate the players around him, you know, can make the, uh, utilize the talents of the players around him. That's the ultimate role of the quarterback. Oh, talking ball with Coach Mike Leach, I love it. Well, I don't really love it, especially for these guys over here. I don't envy the defenders that have to go up and try to shut down this air raid, especially these guys right here, the linebackers. You guys gonna be all right? Okay, good luck. Find the open grass is what you hear Mike Leach saying all the time. In this case, we're just finding the open sand because that's all we've got. This guy coming out underneath as well, reading this linebacker. He blitzes, he's gonna keep on going, looking for that open grass. That's what you have to do as a receiver. As a quarterback, you gotta just find the open receiver. So this guy's gotta be extremely accurate. He's gotta throw it on the right shoulder and he's gotta know what everybody's doing on the field. So you gotta take care of him if you're Mike Leach. That's the most precious treasure that there is. Ah, precious. Oh, somebody give me my sunblock when we come back to Sandy Key West. We'll talk about pirates, but it's time to go snorkeling right here in the Keys. <laughs> when portraits continue. We kidnap and plunder and rifle and loot, drink up me hearties, yo ho! Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for leech. The pirates used to sail these seas. Might be one or two still out there. Ooh. Yeah, there could be a pirate in Key West, that's for sure. Even in Starkville, Mississippi. Portraits bring out personalities, don't they? And uh, I don't know that there's enough paint or there's enough canvas to capture all that is the personality of Coach Mike Leach. I didn't realize that, uh, that his hair was so wild. A lot of attitude in the hair. And of course, the coin from the Atocha. When you turn on the TV and he's there on the sidelines coaching these games, he doesn't wear that coin on the outside, but you know what's in there. You know that that pirate's got that coin from the Atocha. It's well documented, your love of history and especially pirates. And many of our viewers have, have read your book. So where did the fascination with pirates come from? Was it a very young age? The pirates, uh kind of took on a life of their own. When I was at Texas Tech, Michael Lewis, who's a great writer, wrote uh, Moneyball, Blindside, Big Short. He came and did an article on us uh, for New York Times Magazine. 
So we interviewed the players and they talked about a speech that I gave the team on pirates. And I had a, I had a real sword, a museum replica sword. And I'm swinging the sword around, you know. How, how are you gonna swing your sword? Are you gonna be all timid like this and the guy comes in and kills you? You know, are you gonna be reckless? Or are you gonna have great execution? You know, are you gonna, you know, great technique, great execution? And in football, your body's your sword and you sharpen it up in the weight room and doing the drills to, you know, to, in practice to execute. I talked about a lot of things at various different times, not just pirates, but I think because of the sword, that was kind of a memorable speech. And then he wrote uh, about the pirate speech in his article. Well, once that happened, then they're all over Lubbock, there's pirate flags. I, I, I've gotten great pirate gear. I mean, you know, you get pirate books, pirate hats, pirate uh, anything that's got a pirate on it. Arr. Shortly after it happened, I started to get a little tired of it. And then I got to thinking, you know, you can be strapped with a, a, a lot worse than that. Because <laughs> they, they could call you whatever they want to call you. <laughs> right. You know? yeah, if you're looking for action, Duval Street in Key West, Florida has it. Bars, really great restaurants, all kinds of good food, trolley rides. Hi, guys. Some trinkets for the tourists to take home some treasures. Hey, you know, speaking of treasures, you guys want to go treasure hunting with Mike Leach? I mean, like, for real treasures out in the ocean, snorting. Let's do it. Come on. <laughs> Let's go see if we can't find some of our own treasure today. Well, the great thing about Key West is it's its own treasure. It's absolutely beautiful here. We're going to actually go snorkel a little wreck over there called Wisteria. So right up here is our shipwreck. Now you can get a really good look at that. Wow, yeah, your, your Key West dog tag. Do you ever take it off? Uh, yeah, I do, actually. I take it off at night. A lot of people never take them off. I take it off when I go to bed. Are they still finding quite a bit? Uh, yeah, I think they found a little over half is what they feel like. I could be wrong on that. But then, of course, it's sprayed all over the ocean floor as when the hurricane hit, and then over the years, as sand in the ocean floor shifts around. Well, we may not find any silver or gold, but I bet you there's some beauty over there at the Mysteria. Yeah. Want to hit it? Yeah, we probably need to hit it. All right, let's do it. We want to go on first sound or on two? What, what, what kind of snap count do you want? Go on, hit. Go, hit. Now, it's one thing to be able to talk with Coach Leach away from a football field, but going way out into the deep end, so to speak, that was special. We set out seeking treasure, but what I found was an experience that I'll cherish forever. Of course, a football coach is gonna love turf, but Mike Leach has an appreciation for the surf as well. The ocean's such an impressive thing, like the wildest combination of exciting and relaxing. I think I can get used to this. Is it tough to go back? I mean, when you come down here, I'd have a hard time leaving. Hard to go back. You need one of those little houses like that in the distance there. Yeah. Oh. You ever run into any sharks out here? I have. So we're we're at Snipes Key, and it's a lot of uh, kind of waist chest deep water. And so we're out there throwing a Nerf football, and there's a big shark circling the boat. Wait, 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 wait. Leech and his boys on a sandbar with sharks doing laps around them, and all they had in their arsenal was a Nerf football? <laughs> I gotta animate this. 
Mike Leach, did 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 it. Giant shark, did 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 it. I had a a friend on the boat, and he didn't like water. He didn't like swimming, and he damn sure didn't like sharks. We got Dion's chicken, and then as he would finish the chicken, he'd throw it in the water. So in the end, we end up chumming this shark. We had a Nerf football for a weapon, and then together close, we're like as big object as possible. So the shark will think we're twice as big as we are. And so then we start doing this red light, green light stuff with a shark. Shark would go around the boat there. We'd take several steps. He'd come back here, we'd freeze. But we were ready to go hand-to-hand -hand combat if we had to. And the one thing that was somewhat comforting is our feet were on the ground. The shark would go again, close up some distance. Shark go again, close up some distance. Then when we were right there close, shark goes around the boat, we haul ass in the boat. Oh, How yeah. big was it about? Uh, about 10 feet? Uh, well, they get bigger each time you think about it. <laughs> Just another day for Mike Leach. He was pretty calm about all that, but he's used to being in the shark-infested waters of big-time college football. You think he'd rather face that shark again? Or Nick Saban's Alabama Crimson Tide in Tuscaloosa? More portraits when we return. Welcome back to Portraits with Coach Mike Leach. It's pretty cool to have a college football coach that's fascinated with pirates, isn't it? Even cooler to have that college football coach wearing the pirate loot around his neck. But you know, Coach Leach isn't all about those tangible objects when it comes to trophies. Yeah, he was the two-time National Coach of the Year in college football, but he'll be the first to tell you some of the other things are every bit as important. So ongoing theme of uh, the pirate talk, what do you consider treasures in your life? Obviously, you know, family, the spiritual stuff, loyalty to friends and that type of thing. But, um, you know, object-wise, I think uh, one of the most important things is that it captures your curiosity, something that drives your curiosity and, and uh, makes your mind turn and uh, kind of opens things up a little bit so that, uh, you know, just creates, uh, broadens the dimension of what you're thinking about. I mean, that's, that's a perfect fit for your, your coin that you wear around your neck, you know, the curiosity. It's just, just the wonder of, of where it came from, how long it sat there at the bottom of the sea. It's, it really is the perfect uh, treasure that you wear around your neck as, as far as objects go, isn't it? Well, 1622, so it's been there for a while. But uh, um, yeah, there's a saying, it's what you learn after you know everything that counts. Mississippi State. Winning is what it's all about to so many people in college football. That trophy is that treasure. Uh, winning football games, uh, very important, but, but, but what does it mean to you? And what, what does it feel like when you put in all that hard work? Well, I think the pursuit of it's the most important. You know, it's, it's you working together with the coaches, working together with the players, and having the chance to share it with the fans the process you're going to be in that more than anything so you better embrace that and obviously it's very fulfilling to win because it's something uh, that you all did together i get this question from reporters all the time now that you've beat somebody some big win right uh, so now you can just relax and think about this and reflect on well doesn't it feel good and doesn't it mean that you you know that, that you've accomplished this and he made such a great play and, and, and you did such a good job coaching and your staff and you're just going, oh, it just feels so good. Because now we don't have to do anything. And, oh man, is it, let's, let's run through memory lane again. <laughs> oh, let's do it some more. Well, there's no time to do that. You don't get to do that. I mean, because the next week you're playing somebody else, it's just as good, you know? And then if you do relax, then you know, you're just trying to trade one win for the other type of thing. Heck, you think that win was fun? I mean, the next one might be fun too, but you gotta, you know, you gotta invest kind of the time and effort. Oh, I swear I need a parrot for my shoulder to just sit there and say, ah, oh, Mike Leach, one of a kind. <laughs>
one of a kind, because you gotta admit, he really is one of a kind. And the offensive guru has seen his style of ball transform college all the way to the NFL, as more and more of his former assistants and players have found their own success. The tree your coaching tree, if you will. Bill Belichick has all of the people who kind of came up under him, and you turn on the TV now, and there are a whole lot of air raid disciples, Mike Leach disciples. How does that make you feel? Uh, I like it. I mean, I, I, I appreciate it. There's more variety in college as far as scheme and things like that, but uh, we always encouraged uh, free thinking, free ideas to try to find a better way. A lot of your assistants that have come along have you know, and a lot of them quarterbacks too, which is interesting because you talk about these quarterbacks have to be great leaders. Lincoln Riley uh, wasn't necessarily a, a spot for him on the field, but there certainly is on the sidelines. Well, he was a real smart guy. He picked up the offense very quickly. I had too many quarterbacks and, you know, just uh, number wise, I had to get rid of some and then I thought Lincoln uh, belonged as a as a coach, student assistant more than a quarterback, and I didn't want to lose him. Of course, that's not the news he wanted to hear. He had to think about it for a day or so. No, I worked with him for eight years, and he was kind of my right-hand guy. I think he was the youngest full-time assistant in the country at the time. Sharp, uh, well-organized thinking, uh, good at uh, uh, getting uh, rid of clutter, you know, which, uh, as you're honing down a game plan or a practice plan, you know, I think uh, that's pretty important. And he's in for a state score. Everybody thinks um, a football game is like Roadrunner and the Coyote, you know, where you're trying to fool the other guy. It's not, uh, football's about execution. And so then, you know, whether it's drills or how to teach it, the most effective way to teach it, that's what drives most of our discussions. If you're not improving these guys, and if you can't uh, coach them into their role, then why are the coaches there? You know, Bear Bryant always said, don't hire anybody unless he knows something that uh, you don't, because if he doesn't know something you don't, you don't need him. Oh, I like that. That's a good one. I think it was also Bear Bryant that said, beach hair, don't care. But it is kind of hard to imagine Coach Bear Bryant hanging out in Key West with Mike Leach in that houndstooth cap. Unless, of course, it was this Bear Bryant. Can we get some sunblock for Coach Bear Bryant, please? We don't want him getting burnt. You know, college football's changed a lot over the years, but one thing that hasn't changed is Mike Leach having an opinion about what's going on. And when we return to portraits, he'll tell us all about what he thinks of the college football landscape right now. goes on and on, doesn't it? Germany's out there somewhere if you keep on going. Nobody's really sure. It's kind of like the future of college football. But you know that Mike Leach has a few thoughts on that. Times are a-changing, uh, reference back to the Bob Dylan stool, but, but college football has changed a lot here in recent years, and where do you see it going? Where do you see the uh, future of college football? Uh, well, I don't think the dust has settled. There's been quite a lot of upheaval. Uh, right now, where we're at is unsustainable, and then so, you know, there's gonna be, uh, I think there's gonna be quite a bit of adjustment in the next couple of years. And right now, we have uh, unmitigated free agency and no salary cap. Talk about the transfer portal and, and sustainability. Uh, wh what are your thoughts on where we are with the NIL? I don't think it's clear. I don't think it's clear at all. Uh, nobody wants to diminish someone's opportunities, but um, you know, you don't want a bunch of cooks in the kitchen where there's a bunch of corruption and, and bidding wars. You know, if we get to where we're constantly having bidding wars, I don't think that helps anybody. And then the, the NFL got rid of that for a reason. Everybody's uh, kind of adjusting to it right now, and, and I don't think anybody fully knows uh, where or how to adjust to it. Touchdown! 
touchdown! To decide a national champion is the best system in place right now to decide that national champ. I've always wanted playoffs. I, you can have, I think 16 is the minimum, you know, but I think you could definitely do 32 or 64. Obviously, to do 64, you'd have to cut back the regular season, but then you could play out of conference if you don't make the playoffs for two games, the natural breaks that come in there, and then, um, or if you get eliminated the first round, you know, you schedule another one, which would be incredibly exciting. I mean, people sit in front of the TV on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday watching football, so they clearly would. I don't think it's an incredibly revolutionary idea. I mean, the, the, the Division One college football acts like it is. You know, everybody understands and has some level of playoffs everywhere else, uh, starting with your uh, local city park and recreation league. I mean. They know how to do a tournament, you know, they know how to do a playoff, you know, that would allow all conference champions to be in it, plus other, you know, deserving teams, and which a uh, portion of that would be a little arbitrary, but if you got to 64, it'd be far less. Yep, college football's always changing, isn't it? But one thing's for sure, I wouldn't mind having Mike Leach coaching my football team. You need a little pirate in you to win football games these days, right? Hey, more portraits when we come back. Stay right there. On each and every episode of Portraits, we try to capture the personality of our guests. And, and whenever I start a portrait, that's what I like to try to have in my head is, is who these people are, what their personalities are. I feel... So incredibly blessed, so lucky to be able to come upstairs, hang out with Hank, and just paint all day, and that people like my art. The pirate's looking pretty good to me right now. I'm pretty happy with, with the start on this one. I hope he would like it. Our favorite pirate, I made a Yo ho, yo ho, a bulldog's life for Leech with your Hale State hoodie on. Well, that's pretty good. Definitely uh, got the Hale State hoodie. Got an eye patch, which I'll have to move that around so I don't uh, lose sight in one eye. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I guess everybody ought to get one of these. I mean, you can't have too many of these suckers. There you go. And I, th I think it would, it would be a good fit here at Captain Tony's Saloon. Hope, hope Joey doesn't mind messing up these walls. They're all so clean and nice. I'll put it right up here. That'll be a good spot for it. Hail State. You know, anything can be a treasure, and this is, it certainly feels like you found your treasure when you, when you make your way back down to Key West. As stressful as, as coaching can be, to be able to sneak away. I mean, this is a gem of a place, isn't it? And just the variety of people and experiences, it gets to be kind of a sensory overload. You know, I mean, it's it's obviously a beautiful place, but all the different personalities and people, and there's times you, you come home and your mind's just racing for all the people you saw and just trying to think about all of it, you know? Pretty relaxing to be out on the water and just uh, see it go by a little bit, you know? Look at those dudes right there, hanging out with Coach Leach on a sandbar in Key West, Florida. That's what makes portraits special. The whole day on the water with Coach Leach was incredible. Nothing like kicking back and chilling out. Woo! Snorkeling can be exhausting, but man, was it fun. A moment like this, without a doubt, a treasure. Hail State! Hail State! Oh. Now that's a treasure! Hail State! When I think of Mike Leach, I see a special person. A person behind the great football mastermind. The Florida Keys is a place where he can relax. Soak in life outside of the great game of college football. This is a special place, and we got to share it with him today, together on Portraits.
You know, growing up as a coach's son, I've had the privilege in life to be around so many unique and special leaders in their field of excellence. This day with Mike Leach and Key West, it's one of those moments. We toured this historic island, climbed to the top of the lighthouse, and looked for miles and miles over this massive ocean. We rode bikes, popped some wheelies, all up and down and around this legendary town. And to top it all off, we went snorkeling for treasures with Coach Mike Leach, just like pirates. Arr. And you know, they say if you can flip a coin inside the Goliath Grouper's mouth outside of Captain Tony's saloon, it's good luck. Oh, ho, ho, I'm getting a scratch off. For Portraits, I'm James Bates. I'll see you next time, and I'll be rich. There's only one. Coach Mike Leach.